in the early 1800s, there was a research conducted by Herman Ebenhaus on memory. Long story short, what he found through his research was that what we learn is forgotten exponentially after the learning session. This was where the idea, the curve of forgetting, came from. We as human beings tend to forget more and more as time passes. If the information is not used regularly, the research showed that the best time for recalling information is shortly after the learning session. Therefore, like many other students back in college, when I put an all-nighter and cram for the test, I rely on high rate of recall after an all-nighter to fully, hopefully pass my test. However, like most of the students who cram, I would also forget almost everything that I learned from the night before. So my tip to everyone who is still in school is to study a bit every day and spread your learning materials across several days and weeks to avoid cramming at the last day like me. Back to the research, Herman Ebenhaus also found out that when we try to recall a list of items, we tend to recall items at the beginning and the end a little bit better than things in the middle. For example, a phone number or a street address when it comes to remembering, we tend to be I think the beginning number is this or that and I'm not sure that the last number is this but for the middle part, for some reason, there's no way we could figure it out Memory is a complicated subject but just for a few minutes let's try to simplify it down so that everyone can understand You can think of our memory as a computer with three stages the saving stage, the storage stage, and the loading stage for example, suppose you hear a song on the radio or the internet, then the next day, you hear a song on your friend's playlist. You recognize a song and remember its tunes and some of its lyrics. So what happened there? When you hear the song for the first time, your memory acts as a computer by processing the information and saving it into your brain so you can use it at a later time. The second stage of storage is where that song information is stored briefly for usage for later time. If you come across that song shortly afterward, then your memory will be able to load up the information of the song and you can remember what the song is about. If you never heard that song again, the information would be discarded from your memory. Of course, all this happened in your head without you really noticing any of it. Ever heard of photographic memory? Also known as identic imagery. The process for people who have photographic memory is like what I described earlier. The image or visual scene can act as a photograph where the eyes will scan it over and store it in the brain for future use. For example, when a person with photographic memory needs the information from a page in a book, he or she can just retrieve that page from the memory and read it. This action is just like how you can save a picture in your computer to look at it later again. However, photographic memory or eidetic imagery is relatively rare in this world. 